Hi, I am Dr. Kat Vlies with Central New Mexico Community College. In video F of the male reproductive system, we're going to learn how the haploid sperm cells are produced in the testes. Just as a quick refresher, when we study meiosis, which we can call gametogenesis as well, the creation of gametes, remember that we always start with a diploid cell, meaning a cell that has all copies of the chromosomes. And the first, when meiosis kicks in, we're first going to see a phase that is going to have the amount of chromosomes. So we refer to this phase here as the reduction phase, meaning we're going to go from, in us humans, from 23 pairs of chromosomes to just 23 chromosomes in each haploid cell that we've produced at the end of that reduction phase. Then when we go into the, the second half of meiosis, we're going to refer to that as the replication phase because now we're literally just going to make more of what we already have. So we'll end up with four cells, one, two, three, four, that are each haploid. So we started out with one diploid cell. Here we, after the reduction phase, we end up with two haploid cells. And at the end of the replication phase, we end up with four haploid cells. Haploid, you can write as 1N. Haploid meaning having only one set of chromosomes, diploid two sets. So meiosis begins with a cell that has a full set of chromosomes from the mother and a full set of chromosomes from the father maternal and paternal chromosomes, they're called. Remember, they line up to f in synapses. These are homologous chromosomes so that they can exchange genetic information during recombination. I hope you remember this. If not, please review it with the help of one of the OpenStax books on general biology or even in your anatomy and physiology OpenStax book. This is reviewed. So let's now apply meiosis to the formation of our sperm cells. First of all, let's go back to some histology. So what we're looking at here is a cross-section of a seminiferous tubule. So this is its wall, and it's in the wall where you see all these different looking nuclei of cells where the sperm cells are formed. As a matter of fact, in the, peripher in the most peripheral part of the wall, so let's say here, this is where we find the diploid cells that we call spermatogonia, for plural, that are responsible for ultimately giving rise to our haploid sperm cells. So our haploid sperm cells with their flagelli are going to be sitting closest to the lumen of our seminiferous tubule. So let's go over the flow chart on the left. So a boy is going to be born with a bunch of spermatogonia, and there will come a point in time at puberty when these spermatogonia are going to become meiotically active. But before they will actually kick into meiosis, they're, they're going to first make copies of themselves. So they're going to go through a ordinary mitotic division and make two daughter cells. One of those daughter cells is going to function again as a spermatogonium. The other daughter cell, which we call the primary spermatocyte, kicks into my the meiosis process. Here we have meiosis 1, or our reduction phase, which produces two haploid cells. 
we will call them secondary spermatocytes. So notice that our spermatogonium was deployed, our primary spermatocyte is really just a copy of our spermatogonium, but one that actually goes through the process of meiosis. What it produces then after meiosis one is two haploid secondary spermatocytes. They then go through their replication phase and we end up with four viable, almost, not quite, but eventually viable um, sperm cells, better called spermatids. Notice they do not have a flagellum yet, so they need to mature further via a process we call spermiogenesis, not to be confused with spermatogenesis. So spermiogenesis is the more specific process in which we see that spermatids mature into spermatozoa, literally meaning sperm animals, as in zoology, the study of animals. So these spermatozoa is what I drew here. So those are your little sperm animals, sperm beasts, spermatozoa. I give them lots of little nicknames. Right, so the direction of spermatogenesis is from our diploid spermatogonia here to our haploid spermatozoa there. Notice I mentioned earlier that we end up with four viable, meaning surviving sperm cells, spermatids that become spermatozoa. We're going to see that in the female, we will end up with only one viable um, gamete after meiosis has occurred. Okay, we're not quite done yet with this slide on the right-hand side because in addition to our seminiferous tubules, which are responsible for the making of sperm cells, in between the seminiferous tubules, we have our so-called interstitial cells. I've mentioned them before. They are also called the cells of Leydig, and they produce testosterone. Testosterone is needed to keep the process of spermatogenesis going. There is a third cell present in the walls, well, I should be careful. Inside of the walls of the, the seminiferous tubules, we have a second cell type. So we have, our, let's refer to our first cell type as our spermatogonia giving rise to sperm cells. Then we have another cell called the Sertoli or Sustentacular cell. Now, you, we can't really easily point. They have a pointer here, but it's hard to see. We'll explain what these cells are all about here um, uh, next. So we have looked at three cell types. We have our cells that end up becoming sperm cells. We have our interstitial cells. And then we have the Sertoli cells that are actually going to take care of spermatogenesis. Before we focus on the Sertoli cells, we'll do that on, in the next video, let's take a look at the anatomy of a sperm cell. You might remember I said before that a sperm cell is really mostly just nucleus and a long tail referred to as a flagellum. It takes a lot of work, effort, to move that flagellum, which is why these sperm cells are so dependent on nutrients, including fructose produced by the seminal vesicles. And in order to use that fructose to make ATP, our, we're going to see in the midpiece of our uh, sperm cell lots of mitochondria. So we have three regions. We have the head region, the midpiece region, and then the flagellum. In the head, we have or covering the head, we have this layer here called the acrosome. Lots of enzymes are present there that are needed to help the sperm penetrate an egg. Now we're going to see that um, the egg will also help out with the production of, 
of substances, enzymes, to help the, um, the sperm cell penetrate. Many, many sperm cells are produced per day. Take a look here, 100 to 300 million a day on average.